Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, goblins of all ages, welcome back. Because we couldn't leave this battle hanging, and baby, the battle music's rocking because we're ready to get slashing and bashing here. Welcome to another special edition of the greatest goddamn D&D stream in this world and the next here. Welcome to Goblin. Under the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> you got Sorite the Destroyer ready to chop down that son of a bitch, Narby, and take him off from head to toe here. Along with my epic Wrecking Crew Destroyers here. You got Fang the Mag who got a fresh cut. You got Crispy Crunchy Wilma Chattington. And of course, to take us away on this epic adventure, the greatest guy in DM and all the land here. It's Nate Gonzalez. Take it away here. Thank you, Soul Raptor Destroyer. And welcome, everyone, to tonight's yeah. Monday Night Edition of. Goblins under the stairs. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's right. Uh, as uh, Carlos mentioned, we could not stick a stay away from you guys. As we're not going to be playing this weekend, so we uh, had to sneak another one in tonight to continue on this battle against Narvi. Uh, does someone want to give a recap of what happened last night? Uh, maybe gain some inspiration. Maybe gain a healing potion if you already have an inspiration. So, well, uh, you actually, Frank, Frank, take it, take it. It's better for you. Cool. Yeah. So, again, we had killed the beast and we had gotten this <laughs> door opened. So then we kind of peek in the door and we see lining the walls a bunch of, uh, you know, faces. And it seems like it's like this building that just never ends going up and down is this crickety kind of uh, sketchy spiral staircase and at the very bottom is this beacon of light so it seems and so as we're kind of traversing down the stairs um, you know we can't help but kind of hear like whispers in this eerie way we try to block that out until we get to a point in the uh, on the staircase where we get really cold and this big flash of light kind of takes over us and teleports us uh, into this prism where we see these three sepulchers um, on each four sides of the um, the prism and upon further investigation uh, we see what are the symbols along the doors of the chosen ones that we had uh, rescued and who are no longer with us um, but we noticed that yes there were 10 chosen ones but there's 12 sepulchers so we eventually were able to deduce that Something's not going to be right with the two sepulchers because each one that had a chosen symbol had the door opened and a deceased Narvi lookalike. Uh, so we are then eventually find the two sepulchers that um, don't belong with the doors closed. And we are able to get the one open and lo and behold there is a what we think is a Narvi clone who is pretty tough to take down and after many countless times of uh, attempting to open the door of the other sepulcher and getting hurt by it I finally am able to and out comes this skull with gemstones embedded into it uh, and we believe that that could be a phylactery that we might have to take down to actually kill Narvi clone, and that's where we are now. All right, excellent. Uh, with such a great uh, recap, you can go and take a greater healing potion instead. Um, and right now, or just put in my inventory? Just put in your inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at the start of your turn, as uh, yeah, as you mentioned, as you were, you spent many rounds uh, 
trying to bash open, uh, trying to pry open anything you could to get this sepulcher doors to uh, open up. Uh, again, throwing back into the pool of deucium and then pushing yourself back up and, and trying it all over again until eventually you're able to push it or uh, break it on open. And as you did, a um, fountains of the shadowy energy burst out from it. Uh, some of that black liquid spills out onto the ground and an inky vortex filled in the center of the room as coming out of that vortex was, yeah, that gleaming black skull, uh, a humanoid skull with a uh, ruby in each one of its eyes, uh, an oversized kind of ruby, and then eight oversized glowing uh, red gemstones in place for teeth. And you noticed that there was a swirling energy uh, writhing around uh, very active inside of these gems and uh, with your passive perception at a quick glance you notice that inside of one of them you could see a face uh, kind of contorted looking face and a fist like pounding on the walls hard to make out any real details of that but just kind of like your mind is able to pick up those uh, subtle uh, details and with that you are up fang all right so bonus action i am going to take the greater healing potion. Okay. 44 plus 4. Uh, and I you know, will, of course, remind you guys you have that Starlight Ambrosia, and to take that is a full turn to do so. It, it would take yeah. your bonus action as well. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, 15 health back. Okay. Um, and then for my full action, I am, let's see here, I am going to cast uh, guiding bolt at it at the second level, so it has to make. Oh wait, no, I just make a uh, spell attack. Mm -hmm. Nineteen. Uh, a nineteen is going to miss. Mm, can I add? I'm gonna add two key points, so to increase it by four. Okay. All right. Um. That will hit then. Nice. Okay. So this is going to be 5d6 radiant. Wow, that fucking sucked. 15 radiant damage. Okay. And he begins to glow subtly with uh, the radiance burning on him. And let me just get like a advantage sign on him. Cool. Anything else for you? Yeah, and then I will kind of just go into this behind the sepulcher. Okay. Um, is that the end of your turn? Yes, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, Wilma, as you are about to start your turn, uh, you guys are standing on the wall and kind of can see down below you guys, uh, Fang, and this floating skull above the pool of Ducium in the center of the room. And as uh, you're looking down, you hear Narvi's voice behind you say, ah, yeah. Master Black Cloak, you weren't supposed to make your way out of there yet. As uh, he holds up his hand to uh, Wilma and tries to blast her off of, uh, out of this area. A, um, ba -ba mm -hmm. <clears throat> you say, uh-uh? <laughs> I said, uh-oh. Uh, 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 let's see. Boom, boom, boom. A 17. It's going to miss. Okay, Wilma, you're up. That's big. So, even after that, I notice he's still casting spells out of his magical whatever. So, I'm going to drop my anti-magic field, cast heal on myself, and then drink a potion of necrotic resistance and then i just kind of like look at soul rack and it's like good luck buddy um and i kind of run away a little bit and like <laughs> we've we've 
we've like gone into these sepulchers here like um when when we opened them like did i notice any like locks or like anything on the ground to think that it could like relock itself or anything like that no you won't <laughs> <laughs> uh no you didn't see anything like that or you don't All right, see I, anything like that i like go into it okay <laughs> cool uh anything else for you that is that is it i'm gonna i'll, I'll roll all my stuff now that's it okay cool oh, yeah, uh, it's a level six heal spell so all right um as Narvi calls down to the skull, its eyes begin to gleam with this red pulsing energy as it looks up in recognition of uh, being called by uh, Master Black Cloak. And the skull, uh, you see this necrotic energy just wafting out of its open mouth as it begins to float on up uh, a bit closer to you all uh, up there. Let's see. This math is uh, fucky. Um. Actually, no. Find the hot news. Essentially, where he is is fine. Uh, or he'd float up a little bit to make it work better. But as he opens up his mouth, he lets out this blood curdling howl as he just screeches out into the air. Um. And I need Solrak and Wilma to both make uh, con saves. Now, does this count as a spell count by Narvi? Cast by Narvi? It does not. It's uh, coming from the skull. And the skull is not Narvi. He called him Master Black Cloak. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going to be racing to it? <laughs> Alright, so what are we looking at? Uh, 10, and I get 2d4, right? Mm hmm. 16. 16. All right. All right. As this blood curling howl is emit from, or emitted from this uh, skull floating here, you guys feel the hair stand up on the edge of your skin. Uh, Wilma has to like curl into the fetal position to hide away from it inside this uh, this sepulcher. And Solrak, you barely evade it as uh, you feel it just draining the life essence from you. It's still, uh, actually, you guys, Hero's Feast makes you not able to be frightened, right? Can't be frightened. Okay, so as you guys also feel this uh, intense fear begin to come over you, it washes right through you as you stand there remaining uh, unharmed from this howl. And so, yeah, me and my woo. tummy. And Solrak, you are up. Okay. Um. God. I think I should take it. But if I did a greater healing, I still have a nice little bit of life. If I take the Starlight Ambrosia, would I keep Narvi grappled? Um. Because I'm not moving, I'm just holding on the status quo. Yeah, I'd say so. What I would do. All right, cool. So, uh, sensing that shit is about to go down, I think it's my time, and I chug down my Harper Starlight Ambrosia, brother. So I can feel better. Get big. Yeah, buddy. So, uh, also, just so you know, we were kind of messing this up last night, but as you're grappling him, you won't be able to take your second hand attack on him also because one hand will of course be grappling him uh, but... what if I do like this <laughs> well then he has a chance to get out <laughs> <laughs> alright so you, 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 you took the starlight ambrosia though yeah buddy it's a long rest here I go <sighs> yeah as you drink that this um, like almost like constellations a, a Illuminated energy just kind of washes over your body. You begin to glow and hum, and you feel this warmth just kind of course through your skin and through your body as uh, you feel complete rejuvenation and almost like you're at peace right now, too. Yay. Oh, no, my temp read, uh, HP went away. Did you, un Did you unclick um, keep max HP? I saw your. Your max HP went down. 
Yeah, no, I'm trying to add it back up. What was it? Plus 54? Yours was either... It was like 53 or 54, something like that, yeah. It was yeah, one away from whatever much. Luke's was. Yeah. Alright, so that's the end of your turn. At the end of your turn, as Narvi sees you get this uh, rejuvenation of strength uh, thrown back into you, uh, he sees an a opportunity to turn into a cloud of smoke and misty step away from you. Uh, he can only go 30 feet, so he's going to go back up here. Uh, and he's back on the floor uh, where Fang and this floating skull is. And it is now... You said he missed this step? Correct, yeah. Okay, so I can't... There's, that doesn't provoke an opportunity attack, correct? Uh, it does not provoke an opportunity attack, but it does provoke your mage... Uh, What's it called? Mage killer, what a mage, mage hunter, whatever it's My called. My mage slayer, yeah, because yeah, that's, that's a magic attack. Yeah, buddy. Good call. So I shall hit him with Dombranga. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nat 20, Dombranga! That's like seven. That's I, <laughs> I can't. The best DM ever. You are a great DM and max damage. <laughs> I can't. So 15 plus 8 is 23. 23. 17 plus 16 is 25, I believe. 33. Uh, yeah. 17 plus 16? Yes. Yeah, no, 7 30. plus 16. I mean. right, so 7 plus 16. 23. 23. So that's 15. Yeah. Plus seven, plus twelve, plus another fifteen, right? So that's forty-nine. You just said a lot of numbers. Uh, it was twenty-three plus twenty-five. Fifteen plus seven, plus then a max no, twelve for the eight. radiance. Fifteen plus eight. Oh, you get another plus one on there. No, no he's. No, I get what you're. We're all good here. I got the I got it under control <laughs> on my side, guys. Uh, so right, uh, it was 117 damage. <laughs> Narvi's turn now. That was his legendary action to to get out of there. Uh, and now he's standing here. Uh, he looks over at uh, the floating skulls. No, no, get back in there! Uh, as he points over to uh, the skull, and you see the defiance in the skull's face as he looks over at Narvi. And uh, Narvi almost like backs down to him as he sees this, and the skull utters out, "Kill them all!" As Narvi looks up, and um, with Solrak who just did this big slash into him. Uh, oh wait a minute! I I don't I get to add superiority die to that too? No, that was Four. mage. It wasn't a uh, superiority dice move. Oh, cool. So I don't even have to use one. Cool. Okay. Sorry. Yep. All Let's good. Um, he's looking at me. Yeah, he's he's looking at you as he reaches up his his bony skeletal hand, and you see these thin green rays begin to spring out from his pointing finger, uh, shooting up in your direction, Solrak. Uh, you feel this magical force begin to take over you, and it looks oddly familiar. As the last thing that Wilmer also saw, as I need you to make a deck save. Okay, well. Twenty-one plus. I'm gonna use my uh, <coughs> D4s because you never know. Twenty-seven. Okay. Let's see. Do you take half damage? As Solrak, as this, as you see this energy begin to lash out from his bony hand, it hits you in your body. Uh, before it makes its way all the way over to you, as I mentioned, you, you recognize this and uh, the how intense of a spell this possibly could be, and how dire of a moment this is, and how you need to evade this. And sure enough, you find that inside of you to evade this spell, taking no damage from it, and. Uh, are unharmed. I almost just hit myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Let's just make Ooh. sure. Yeah, but about. That was scary. Yeah, cool. As he sees this uh, not take effect, he uh, scoffs and begins to run back away from the wall even further now. Uh, and that's going to be his turn there. Um, okay. Uh, as the skull <sighs> hovers in the space, noticing, of course, the one that has uh, damaged the the one that's supposed to be carrying out the true plans of the real master at hand here. Uh, he floats on up even closer <sighs> towards Solrak. Uh, we're just going to put him over in this space because now he's technically in this space. Um, <clears throat> and Wilma. And... And with this glowing energy pulsing out from his gems around him, it begins to <clears throat> send this cold energy um, into your guys' bodies. And you feel as, again, this life force begins to get strained and pulled away from you. As I need... Uh, actually, it's, it'll just be Solrak on this one. What is it, con again? Uh, this one is, okay. it's a different roll, this one's a con. It's a different one from the hell last time. Okay. That's <laughs> one, mm. bitch! Mm. Boop, boop, boop. <clears throat> Stick your skull up your ass, boy! Yeah, 20. <laughs> All right. As uh, it's my destiny. this cold energy is <laughs> trying to just pull uh, whatever it is from you, Solrak, and into itself, uh, you again you see you feel this dire moment here, and you fight it off. Uh, he is you can feel this palpable uh, malevolent energy is just pulsing from him now as he's this swirling uh, kind of almost like crystal dust starts forming around him. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I need you to make another con save, Solrak. Twenty-two. Wait, let me add a do one d four just to be safe. You throw four. up your hands uh, to block out these the dust, the crystalline dust from blinding you in this area. And if you, um, as quickly as you do, the dust all begins to just smack you across the face and all settles down. Uh, you look back at him, blinking, unaffected. And uh, it is Fang's turn. Um, how far is the skull from me at this moment? <laughs> uh, from you at this moment, you would have to go... It's like... 45 feet laterally, right? It looks about maybe 40 feet, you know, give or take, whatever, 10 feet, and then 10 feet up on the other side of the wall. I can make a ranged spell attack on it, though, right? Yes, but as I mentioned before, uh, the gravity between the different walls is, is kind of strange, and it would, you would have to make with disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so you said forty-five feet laterally, yeah? It look. I mean, whatever. Like to go, like to about here, right? Or I guess this one. Okay. Y'all are on floor one. So I try to get up this wall. Mm-hmm. So is that was that acrobatics? Uh, yeah, acrobatics or athletics as you begin to try to cross over this pile of rubble and make your way onto the other wall and nimbly bimbly you make your way on over there no problem i'll drop your token over on the other side so like we'll, we'll it's like right here and i will so how far did i just move uh that was 45 feet no that was like 10 feet to get onto the other wall, essentially. Okay. Um, but I will then proceed to move right there. So let's see, I've done uh, 40 feet. And I will cast Guiding Bolt again at the... Uh, s Actually, I lied. I'm gonna swing at it like a fucking baseball bat. I'm gonna get a little closer. Okay. 
see if that does anything. Um, I can't move to that next clip. There we go. Swing in. 16 will not hit. Nope. 30, 20. Uh, a dirty 20 will hit. Oh, hell yeah. Alright. 11 bludgeoning. Is this considered undead? Uh, they are undead. Oh, hell yeah. One fire damage. Okay. And three radiant damage. And then, uh, bonus action. I will, um... Try and kick it. 16 won't hit. Damn. 16 will not and hit. Then I will use um, Flurry of Bows to spend a key point, and I will use Hand of Healing on myself. Okay. Alright, anything else for you? That's everything. Okay, as uh, you go and do that, um, you strike into him and you feel this cold energy, uh, as Solrak has felt, begin to tr pull energy away from you. Uh, and actually, this is each creature. This one is each creature within 30 feet. So, uh, Wilma, you're actually in on this one, too. Even though I'm, like, inside, I'll get any cover? Yep, nope, no cover with, uh, <clears throat> kinds of magic Boo. effects. Boo. Uh-huh, I know. And, uh, so that is a... It's not, it's a, it's just everyone within 30 feet, so it's not like I'm targeting you with a spell that directly That's hits fine. you or anything. It's, a. Uh, a con save, please. As you just feel this cold energy just kind of linger off from around him, wafting around Fuck. in the corner. Twelve. Twenty-nine. Okay. Uh-huh. So, Wilma, uh, not, like, able to see what's going on around here. Uh, you know, or Fang and Solrak, they both kind of brace themselves as they see the, the floating skull begin to uh, emit this cold aura, this energy draining aura from it. Uh, but it takes you by surprise as you feel this uh, parts of your soul begin to get drained away from you. As um, you, your hit point maximum uh, and your current hit points are reduced by 14. It's not um, necrotic or anything. It is not. No, it's just it's just magically reduced by four. It's, 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 it's not actually it's not an actual damage type. <laughs> right. Back to fourteen. So I'll drop this by fourteen. All right. So thirty-two. Right. Uh, he muted after we realized we were laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, am I alive or not? All right. I don't care who hears it, I just don't want to be distracted. I thought you were mocking me for a second. I was like, well, I'm no. just dying. Okay. 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 We all He's love amazing. him now. What Hilarious. a dick. Right. Uh, Wilma, you are up now. Mm, I am up now, aren't I? Yep. Um. But you don't have concentration anymore. <laughs> No con. Um, so I am going to stick my head out, and he can give me a deck save. The skull. All right. That's a nat twenty. Nat twenty. God damn it! So nothing with that. And then nat twenty. Bonus action, I'm gonna healing word myself. Okay. Alright, alright. Uh and I just go get him so wreck. <laughs> As you yell Bang. that, uh you guys are all paying attention to the skull down there. Uh not even looking as a uh a bolt of lightning just comes streaking out of the sky. Uh going to hit uh, you, Solrak. Uh, deck save for me, please. Alright. Ooh. Ooh, that was my last six level spell. Um. Wait, wait. 2d6, there you go. Two. 
Okay, so, um, 22. Yep. You take, uh, 43 points of lightning damage. <laughs> As it gets zapped into you, a lightning then arcs poof, off of that, uh, striking into Fang. I need Fang to make a deck save. Yeah. Wait, actually, did that, so that means I failed the save. You did fail the save. I'm going to use an Indomitable. Okay. 22. 22. Alright, um, so, da -da -da. so dirty 20 plus 25. Well, we'll take the, it's the 2d4 that you rolled first, because you don't get to re-roll them, and then you take the higher of the ones that you rolled, um, but the 24 uh, will be, dun, dun, dun. let me just double check, I think that might be just good enough. Uh, yeah, that, that just, you, you make it on that one. Fang, what did you roll total? Who, me? Yeah. So 22. Oh. 22. So, so Rack, you take half of that damage then. The So half of 43, which is 21 or whatever. Uh, you rolled 21 total. Uh, so you will 22. take, or 22 total, you will take 43 lightning damage, but it's because it's a dex save, you take half of that. Uh, so tw yeah. 21. And then another uh, arc of lightning arcs across the room uh, and like a um, like a, uh, a, a storm rod on top of a building it strikes into Wilma I need you to make a deck save too I don't get anything for being inside this fucking thing nope <laughs> alright not not with a chain lightning that one. <laughs> that one no really okay. <laughs> you take 43 points of lightning damage then hold on hold on a second hold on a second hold on a second Okay. <laughs> what is this thing? This is lightning, right? Yeah. Spell captures some of the incoming energy stored. You have resistance to the triggering damage type until the start of your next turn. So, bam. We're going to do that. Cool. Yeah, um, absorb elements for sure. Resistance is at level one, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to cast that at level one. Cool. Yeah, so just like I mentioned, like a lightning rod, essentially, you just like are absorbing this this energy of the storm into you. Uh, you take half of the damage then, so 21 damage, and your next melee attack has uh, extra lightning damage, right? That's how absorb elements. Works. I think so, and then yeah, or, or, or I think it. Oh, I yeah. thought it just comes. I thought it just came out. Oh, it's 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 melee. Okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's melee. Yeah, I'm totally gonna go whack somebody now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Solrak, you're up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after uh, taking this lightning damage, I feel the anger flowing through my veins here. And I'm gonna say a little something I haven't said in quite some time. Oh, it's, it's rage time! time here. <laughs> I'm surprised it's taking this long. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to get to my turn, but all these goddamn legendary oh, actions going on and shit. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then I'm pissed off, and I walk up to the skull. Just the most controlled thing I can say to Fang is, Focus on Narby. I got this bitch. I swing at the skull. Don't bring a... That's a 20 fizzle. 20 will just hit. I need to add a d4. Yeah, buddy. And that's 11 damage, plus 2, 13 damage. Okay. Here we go again. <laughs> nat 20, motherfucker! <laughs> An angry nat 20, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> An angry nat 20, I love it. Why is it just him, though? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pissing me off so much. Max <laughs> damage. Yeah, okay. fuck. So 14 <laughs> plus 8 is 22, plus 14 plus 16 plus 30, uh, 22 plus 52 points, plus my two rages. <laughs> so 54 points. Yes. Fuck yeah. But you know who's counting. Oh, I am counting. <laughs> Damn. And, uh, Are you gonna go attack again? again? <laughs> Go 
30, 30. 30, 30 hits. And that's 12 plus 2, 14 plus whatever that Damn, other damage The dice are hot done. over at the Garcia <laughs> Ring. <laughs> they <Dang>. seriously are. Shabbat <laughs> Shalom. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, Passover Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and, uh... That will be it, because I rage, so I can't do my fourth attack. Alright. Uh, incredible. As you slash into this skull floating in front of you guys several times feverishly, uh, you definitely, you know... If you would have struck this into a giant, the giant would probably be fucking dead. But you just hacking away into this skull somehow, still floating there, uh, you could sense that the magical aura that's palpable around it is is uh, diminishing with each one of these blows. And even so, uh, still it begins to swirl around as it opens up its mouth, this dusty <coughs> uh, kind of diamond-like material around it. And you and Fang, Solrak and Fang, I need con saves as you have to block oh, it out uh, trying to... I'm going to Mage Slayer. Note. Uh, this is not a spell. Con save first. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay. Twenty-seven. You guys both block out this the dust, the, the diamond dust from blinding you in this moment as it tries to uh, use an opportunity to escape uh, in a in a cloud of dust. But you guys uh, block that from being able to happen. And Narvi, um, Narvi down here, who you know maybe a flaw of him is that he underestimates the resolve of the wrecking crew. But nonetheless, he uh, you guys watch as he hovers on up to. Actually, we're gonna. Yeah, he's going to hover on over to the floor over here. So from floor two to floor three, he gets right here. Uh -oh. Can't be good. And as he positions himself on over here. So he's technically within reach of me, right? No, because you are looking at yeah, he's like here. Two. He's more, yeah, like over oh, here. Yeah, the squares, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's not on our wall. Correct? He's not on your wall. No. Correct. That's what, yeah. yeah. So uh, as he, you guys see him beginning to conjure a spell with his staff. Uh, he holds it on up, and um, so rack looking the strongest and hurting everyone the most. Uh, you feel this energy begin to uh, pull on you. And I need you to make a, another con save. Oof. Doesn't he, doesn't Narvi have disadvantage or something? Or, uh, because it's a con save and not him doing a spell attack, uh, that doesn't have an effect like that. And it, um, he also designed this place to his advantage. Um, That's fair. 24, as you feel this cold energy begin to pull you away from you, Sorak, again, you just, hot, as I mentioned, the a flaw of Narvi is that he underestimates the resolve of you all, and you stand there stone cold, taking it as seemingly unaffected yeah. by this at all. Uh, and he is going to use a legendary action now to Misty Step. He just misty stepping all around the fucking world right now. Oh yeah, he, he can do it at, <laughs> at will, so that's a fun thing. Uh, all right. Action, like yeah. a night crawler from X Men. Yeah. So uh, as he oh, lands that's... here, though, that that was his legendary action to do that one um, at the end of his turn. So uh, this floating skull up now. Um, <laughs> nice. Oh, not nice. Um. He opens up his jaws and just begins to let out another blood-curdling howl as he did when he first entered into the fray. And as he does, it just sends this immense, uh, shot, like, spiking pain uh, down your guys' bodies, uh, immediately down your spine as everyone within 30 feet of him, that includes Wilma, uh, needs to make a con save. This one was not a spell, correct? Not a spell. Okay. Ooh, nah, that's 20 for Rook. So, Fuck. 17 plus... 18. Oh, <coughs> plus 7. It's 24. Okay. Uh, what'd you roll, Will? Uh, 20. 18. Okay. Uh, 
as this screeching sound just emits around here, guys, you have to fight on, fight it off from, like, really taking a part away from you. You can feel, like, your soul inside of you fighting inside your, your meat body, trying to break out, but you fight it, uh, this energy from pulling it on out of you. And each one of you guys, actually, you all make the save. Uh, Yay! Wilma That's survives real. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you got a nat 20. Uh, no, you all succeed that. Uh, Fang, you are up. This floating skull right here. Uh, actually, he's going to use a legendary action right now to uh, fly half his speed. Um, up. Charity attacks? Actually, valid point. He's not going to do that. Um, oh, no, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> instead, no, instead, because he just took his turn, it restarts his uh, legendary actions. Um, yeah, I need all three of you guys to again make a con save. This is a different ability than the last one oh. we just did. Oh, my God. Oh, you, something about him just tries to pull the life force from you guys. As you guys can see, Solrak and Fang standing in front of him, the faces pounding on the on the stone, the crystal within <clears> his <throat> jaw and his eyes. Um, 22. 22. Nine. Nine. Fang? 25. Okay. Uh, Wilma, your hit point maximum is reduced by 10 as more energy is, is drained from you, being pulled, uh, and you begin to get weaker and weaker with each one of these. And Fang, you are Do I take 10 damage as well, or...? Yeah, your maximum is reduced, and you take, uh, the 10 damage. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Cool. Um, I think now is a good time to go ahead and use my Harper's Starlight Ambrosia. Hells to the yes. Alright, so as you stand here face to face with this glowing uh, skull right in front of you, uh, quaff down this exquisite potion and uh, the shimmering liquid begins to give this gentle silvery glow all over your body reminiscent of the starlight and everything your fatigue your wounds they all melt away and you feel this sense of peace and strength just come over you and uh, you are ready to continue on in this battle although you might you are knock knock knocking on death's door Yo. All right, uh, Wilma, you are up. <laughs> I am going to. Yeah, that was a blessing. Cure wounds. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're all we're all close. We're all friendly right here. Yeah, thirty feet. All right, cool. Um, so I am going to grab grab my pearls, and we're gonna just kind of exacerbate that 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 good feeling around all of us and we're going to cast bless so everyone gets a nice little bless action there and then i am going to stick my head out and scully can give me a dex a dex save okay so with bless all your guys attack rolls have advantage or, or have a d4 on it rather not advantage um, every roll has a d4 not every roll not a, I thought it was not a building. I thought it was saves. I thought yeah, 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 yeah. Everything except for checks. Yep. Uh, yeah, so he fails with a seven, but I will burn a legendary resistance. So, with that, I've I've noticed that I'm getting my ass kicked in here. So, I, so I go to like the back corner of the of the of the thing. Like still in it and just kind of <laughs> like curl up in a ball and just like, come on guys, you can do it. I believe in you. Amazing. Anything else for you? That's it. Okay. Um, <coughs> let's see real quick before Solrak takes his turn. Oh. Yes. Um. Oh nope. Okay. So I'll make it red. It's fun when it's red. <laughs> All right. Um, he, Narvi, that is. Um, actually, nah. You can take your turn. 
He's just gonna—he's gonna—he's gonna use uh, a legendary action to move half his movement, and that's it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna slash away at this Scully. Okay. Bang. Twenty-eight. That will hit. Hits. And that's twelve plus whatever that is, because it's not showing. Thirteen plus two, so twenty-five. Yeah, buddy. Okay, here I go again. Twenty-three that will plus. Hit. Oh, nice. Okay, well, that's ten plus three, uh, thirteen. Okay. And then here we go again. Twenty-seven, and that's thirteen plus eight, so twenty-one. And now common yeah. demon sword. Twenty-six, and that's fourteen plus six, twenty damage. Okay. And, uh, end of my turn. Yeah, crack into him a few times and uh definitely notice that the weights floating there starting to waver a bit, uh become a little uneasy and a little uh lopsided. And with Narvi up now. Uh, actually, Skull will take a legendary action first. Um, just Fang and Solrak, the swirling dust, cloud of dust begins to swirl around you guys. I need you both to make con saves. Okay. 19 plus, boom, boom, boom. You now get 3d4s, technically. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Plus 7, so 26. <laughs> and regardless, you guys fight it off. Uh, no matter how much of an onslaught of this dust he tries to throw in your guys' faces, you keep on fighting it off. Uh, Narvi, though, sneaking on up behind you guys as this is going on. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, he begins to whisper some strange words behind your back, Solrak, and you hear them, and you begin to, like, recognize them as these, like, kind of strange eldritch mutterings that were going on with a lot of, like, the, uh, the Kraken Society and those following the Avalith. And as he mutters these words, I need you to make a wisdom save as he, you feel a part of your mind get tapped into this deep, dark region, uh, a nightmare region. That you do Great. not want to touch into. Okay. Uh, Great. I'm going to re-roll that with a lucky. Okay. Plus three. D4. Oh, 12. Oh, nine. So, oh. 16. 16. Okay. Uh, Rack, will you describe to us what would be your biggest nightmare manifested. Now, this isn't me being frightened, right? Because we, we can't be frightened. Uh, you will not be frightened. Uh, that is a part of what this spell can do, but there is another part of it. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, so basically, you... Uh... Camera shot first person view <laughs> Solrak finally comes to Daggerford a hero there is that li uh, my mom is in a room in the throne room with her back turned to me and I slowly walk up to her, because I can't believe that it's her, but then all of a sudden I get really excited. When I put my arm on her shoulder and I turn over, I see this skull just like scowling in pain, and instead of tears coming down of it, there's blood, and it just looks like it's just pure suffering and eternal damnation. And I look out 
the window's a dagger for it, and that's all I can also see. And it's just everybody suffering, and the, 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 it, it literally looks like hell on earth. With lunging, with swollen bodies, kind of just crawling around, and just living surrounded in hell. And I... Turns out I failed. So, like, you find yourself in this living hell currently. Everything around you represents this version of Daggerford, this version of yourself that you so desperately never, ever wanted to come true, but here it is. And you're living in it. And in the background, as you're unaware of this, Narvi just laughs hysterically. And uh, begins to step forward closer and closer to you and Fang, and that is going to be his turn. Uh, the skull here floating, Master Black Hood, <coughs> as uh, he, as Narvi called him, um, is not able to regain that charge. So, um, Solrak and Fang right here, it stares at the two of you, uh, one gleaming red crystal in each one of its eyes and again you feel your life force pulling from it going into these eyes and Fang as you stare into the one looking right at you you swear you see a visage of how you remember Narvi looking back in Waterdeep um, when you guys met him when he took the, the beacon from Wilmore confronting you guys in the streets and I need the two of you guys to make con saves Mm. Mm. Guys are so conny. <laughs> Bunch of fucking con artists. Uh, so Sol. Oh, so that's a thirty-one Sol rack. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, where's the first roll? All right, there we go. <laughs> um. Da -da 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 -da. As you guys feel this being pulled from you, Fang, you look into this this crystal, and, and how, how do you fight this off? This energy sucking your soul into it. It's Fang or both of us? Fang, because you're kind of out of it right now. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, after just putting down this uh, Harper's um, Starlight Ambrosia, um, I feel this sense of alignment and focus energy and light just kind of taking over my entire body it's like i feel 110 percent uh, i wish i could always feel like this and i i can sense that the skull is trying to kind of take control of me and you know, with my focus i completely block it out Hell yes, and as uh, you guys can both feel this aura of cold just pooling at you, uh, yeah, you fight that off, and it begins to uh, try to uh, ascend up away from you using a legendary action move, half its movement. It's going to go up, so now it's 20 feet in the air, but as it begins to fly on up, you can certainly take an op attack if you like. Can I see the skull yeah. at all, or no? Um, I'll say that you can. Because really, uh, I let you describe how you wanted it to look. It really, the effect of it is just supposed to be like a, like a physical creature-like manifestation almost. Um, right. But I, I liked what you said, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll with it. Yeah. Um, the seventeen so hit. I can attack it. Uh, seventeen misses. Uh, but you do have you a get d4. Two d4s. Yeah. Three. Twenty-three hits. Twenty-three misses. Twenty-three three hits him. Okay. Oh yeah. That's, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thirty-two <laughs> damage. Oh, oh. oh, max damage, bitch. <laughs> Six bludgeoning, one fire, and four radiant. Okay. My uh, dice have been except for con. Yes. Yeah, so, Rack, roll roll wisdom save for me before you uh, do this. Actually. Okay. Uh. What? You get 3d4s if that didn't save, but yeah. yeah. I'm making sure, I'm making sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> 29. I'm saving. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna 
I'm, I'm breaking the rules a little bit. Um, all right. So, Rack, you're gonna take ten points of what? this damage. Listen, <laughs> you're gonna take ten points of this damage. This is uh psychic damage, so that's I'm giving you half of it already. Um, and uh, with this, you notice the skull. Uh, that is floating there as you're in this space where you're not sure how you got here. Uh, your memory evades you of, of how you are in, are in Daggerford right now in this terrible space, but then you see this skull floating in front of you. Fang kind of in this weird state uh, beside you, and the, the skull begins to try to siphon the life force, this essence from the two of you. Um, you s in this moment, you realize something's not right. Uh, how do you break out of this this phantasmal effect and and yeah go go with that first and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I realize that something's not right, and I realize then that, that I've actually been to the dark puzzle before. I don't know why that was and. I've floated in eternal damnation, only to be saved by the gods, and god damn it, I don't remember dying. I remember death before that pretty clearly. So I say, this must be coming from that bastard's head, which means I have to get that bastard to stop thinking the only way I know how. Concuss and blow straight to the dome here! And then I swing meathead strike at the skull. Yeah, imagine you almost hear like a voice like calling you from a distance, like to to wake up or pull yourself out of it. And uh, in this moment, you, you see the skull beginning to lift up and ascend away from you guys. Uh, Fang and Solrek collectively, how do you destroy this this skull? Mm. Nice. So I jump out of the light, right, out of this new yeah. world, and I see the actual Fang right there. And I've never actually been happier to see Fang in my life, the real Fang. And literally, it's like merging both of our cosmos together into a single strike. You know, I'm coming in with the full strength of Dawnbringer. And I'll let him add whatever he's going to add to attack, but it's going to be the joint damage of this shit put together. Fuck yeah. One wrecking crew Yeah, smash so, uh, in. you know, I'm, I'm in this zen, and again, I pretty much have never been more focused, and I sense that uh, the skull has is, is rather weak, and <laughs> it's gonna start to float away, and my eyes just kind of shoot open veins bulging from my from my head and i kind of out of the corner of my eyes see soul rack and i know he's raging and he also notices the skull after snapping out of uh this little thing that he was in and i imagine i'm swinging like from the left side of him and soul rack is swinging from the right and I kind of, we kind of just go right, like, towards each other. And we just brush it as our weapons kind of meet. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yes. And in this instant, as your guys' two magical weapons, boom, connect in the center here. Smashing into this skull with this, <laughs> these floating gemstones inside of it. The skull begins to crack <laughs> and turns to black. And then... <laughs> turns to this black ash that just whoo, floats away into the air, wafting around in spiraling mist, <laughs> and the eight gemstones, the red gemstones that were inside of it, goom, doom, 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 they all collapse and fall to the ground right there. And with a chilling fury in his hollow voice, Narby's words, they cut through this chilling air. You may have extinguished one flame, but darkness knows no bounds. Halister's demise merely heralds the new dawn of a new era, where my power shall reign supreme. Unshackled by the constraints of mortal servitude, 
Prepare yourselves, for now true darkness awaits. <laughs> and uh, these eight gemstones clatter down to the ground. Uh, Narvi standing here now. You can feel this immense rage, this palpable aura uh, radiating from him. Uh, he erupts, and Fang and Solrak, you feel it pull at you as I need you both to make uh, con saving throws. Damn. He's gonna roll 40. He's gonna roll 40. I know. Alright. Um so you guys take uh you both succeeded, so it's forty two necrotic damage, half to twenty one, uh, and then what fang you take. Uh, yeah, and then both of you guys take half because you're both uh resistant right now. Just pretty cool. So so ten damage total. So do I only take five for being resistant to necrotic damage? It's ten total. Yeah, yeah, because I'm I'm raging, so that's where my extra resistance mm -hmm. came from. So yours was the necrotic resistance. Yeah. So it's half of the forty-two, which is twenty-one, and half of that. All right. Um, like a uh, atom bomb exploding from him. This uh, this force that tries to disrupt your guy's life just emits it, but. As I mentioned uh, once or twice already this day in this fight, Narvi severely uh, underestimates the resolve of the Red <clears throat> crew. And Fang, as you stand here, almost unaffected by this, what was to be a, a big hit from Narvi, what do you do? Fuck him up, Fang. Yeah, you know what? Come friends. What? <laughs> yeah. It's talking time now, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I break out the Uno deck. <laughs> <laughs> challenge. I'm going to try and rip a Sacred Flame at him. Make deck save. Okay. Nah, 20. Two. Um, Stands right in front. Yeah, uh, Steps off to the side. I... Disengage and run over here. See your feeble attempts at defiance only fuel my power. See, uh, as you begin to run away from him, uh, he actually, that legendary action cost me three, I believe. Yep. So, Wilma, you're up. I hear all this shit happen, and I just <laughs> peek my head out again, and I. I see the skulls broken. There's gems everywhere. Narvi's in the corner, and stuff is going down. Um, I'm gonna pull out Krishana Bomb for a second. And is it like pointing at anything? Or it, um, you feel it in your hand, uh, definitely pulsing, giving the subtle vibrations, and uh, you notice that there definitely seems to be some sort of connection to these gems strewn about on the ground. Alright, so I'm gonna... I kind of, like, slide up behind here, so that's 25 feet of movement. I've got Krishna Bomb in my um, hand. Is it... Is it getting is it getting stronger? Is there any, like, like what's... You know, like, is it all the gems? Is it one of the gems? Is it... Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to really get a, a full understanding, or, or, you know, it just seems to had the same sensation over the area itself. It doesn't really give you a direct, like, uh, this This gem's the one or whatever, but you, as you look over at them, uh, or do, do you want to give them a closer look? Can I use an action from here to determine what's, what's going on with the gems? Yeah, you can make a um, Arcana check. Ah, the fucking perception. Come on, man. Arcana. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, the different hey. thing. So you, you can make perception if you want. It'll be a different DC, and you'll get different information. But it depends on what you're. You know, I you're I would. Uh, I I just rolled it, so it is what it is. All right. Sounds good. Sounds solid good. Solid nine. All right. Solid nine. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, you see inside of them, um, it seems to just have this like glowing, pulsing kind of energy inside of each one of them uh and 
I'll say with your uh, passive perception. Um, actually, you, know, you want to make a perception check? Go ahead and make a perception check. I love to make a perception check. Twenty. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, they're all glowing, pulsing with this swirling energy inside of it, almost like they're alive. And um, inside of uh, of each one of them, you can see what looks like some sort of life force, um, like a a spectral version of a humanoid form of sorts. Uh, inside the two oversized gemstones in the eyes. Uh, you notice in one of them a bald humanoid figure uh, that looks pretty similar to how uh, Narvi would look in in a non-undead form. Uh, so you'd imagine, of course, that's uh, whatever you'd, you'd make of that uh, with your low arcana. But And then in the other ones, you notice there are other kinds of faces. Uh, they're not any that you recognize or any until you somehow your eyes lock on one of the gems that were the teeth, and inside of that you see a figure uh, feverishly pounding at the at the tooth on the inner walls of it, and it presses its face up against it, and for a moment you have to squint your eyes, but you swear, you swear it looks like Wilmore. Mm. I would... No <laughs> And they're gemstones. I would. So, so I did. Hold on. So I was here. And then I went. And I was here. So I did 20, 30 feet. Or no, that's, that's from here, right? So I did 25. I'd go another five feet. I would try to grab a couple. Um, I would probably focus on obviously Wilmore and the Narvi looking character. I'd try to grab as many as I can. And then I would just kind of yell out to Solrak and Fang, just like, don't let him go. And I would bunny hop back into the sepulchre um, with I gotcha. all the gems that I've kind of put together. All right. Well, I'll say, yeah, you scoop down, you reach down, you scoop them all up in like one fell swoop. Uh, if that's Perfect. what you wanted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, like, I, if I can get them all, i definitely get them all, but I, 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 I would make sure that I got Wilmore and, um, whatchamacallit. Okay. RV2.0. All right. Uh, anything else for you? Rather back. So I'd rather hop back. I can go 30 feet, so I just go, whoosh, you just see me just hop right back in as I pick all this up. <laughs> that's it. Oh. All right, all right. Uh, Solrak, you are up as Narvi seems to have uh, slowed down a little bit right now, at least his turn with uh, using that one big boom. He was really expecting a, a bigger return from that, and it seems to have exhausted him a little bit. Hey, oh, we all. And <laughs> uh, now I'm going to walk on up to him. <laughs> and just like, I'm just... I know that it's not over after killing this Narvi, but I'm going to enjoy beating the fuck out of this guy. And I'm gonna swing my down bring her. Uh, 22 plus, I have 3d4s, so do I assume it hits? <laughs> it could not. Really? It could not, yeah. 30. That will hit. <laughs> 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 It could, so. it could have been 25. Uh, That's true. <laughs> 11 plus 14, uh, 25. Okay, 25. Why do you say that? Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Uh, I need to make a con save. Wait, what was my... Oh, no, he's not concentrating anymore because you dropped. So you broke out of that. Cool. Yep. And here, here it would hit regardless. So uh, hit. Yeah, because you're blessed. So, yep, that'll hit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, twenty seven damage. Okay. Uh boom. And then here's number three. <laughs> now twenty motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 20. Oh, life is good on a Monday. Uh, 
did 20 on the top and then 24 on the bottom. Okay. Uh, so that is 44 damage. So, Rack, as you break yourself out of this nightmare version of reality, you and Fang simultaneously smash the skull. Jensen's falling to the ground. You hear Wilma declare that Wilmore seems to be trapped inside of one of them. Uh, notices Narvi and another one. You rush on over to this the lich version the, of Narvi. This is Narvi. Uh, in all his glory. Uh, with you, the Dawnbringer, the divine relic of a Thander that has brought you this way to eliminate the darkness and eradicate it and usher in the new dawn. How do you kill an RV? Yeah! So as I said, I'm walking up to him and I just literally say, I'm going to enjoy this. And I take the first slash at him, and he's like, ah! And at first, he's, he's just like, I promise you, don't kill me. I'll give you power. I'll give you everything you've ever wanted, and I don't care. And I hit him again, and this time, he looks at me. He's like, no, you don't know what you're doing, and I hit him again. <laughs> and this time, he just turns fucking dark as hell. And he's like, this is not the end, you mortal bastard. And I say, <clears throat> I'm glad. Because I'm going to enjoy killing you again next time I see you, you bitch. This is for Wilmore. And I slash him with Dombringer. Chop off his fucking head. And then I hold it up. And I say, blood for blood hairs. Rage <laughs> goes to my eyes. <laughs> so wrecked. <laughs> just destroy his Narby in this instant, holding up his desecrated head in his palm. This cold energy <laughs> wafts up through this pyramidal like space. The white pedestals in the area boom, 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 begin to crumble all around, all turning into rubble. The dark pools of Ducium in the centers <laughs> begin to dry up, turning to black ash. A vortex begins to rip overhead, collapsing, spilling black ash from the ceiling and diamonds onto the floor. Uh, Wilma, the crystal shard in your hand, begins to pulse uh, with this blue light and subtle variations as a portal, a black portal, rips on open in the middle of time and space. And the key, uh, the diamond is, uh, or the crystal shard is pulsing in time with the portal right there as well as the building around you guys seems to be collapsing. I just, uh, I kind of remember. This is, this is the safe, and and I kind of start running towards the portal. Got all my gemstones, <clears throat> as well, um, and try to take Crenshana Bomb into the portal and just kind of get the guys. Let's go. Whoa. And yeah, I just kind of run over to that portal. Hop in with Wilma. Parts of the building collapsing all around you. I'm just getting hit by rubble as you guys are diving on into this space. Uh, you look around as the sepulchers all begin to crumble to dust uh, as you begin to evacuate this area. And as the three of you all jump into this portal, you watch as the ceiling and the walls all right down with you guys begin to collapse. And... The three of you guys uh, make your way out out of this portal, swirling with energy. Um, let me find the right map. Dun, 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 dun. Please be the bar. Please be the bar. Please be the bar. Oops, uh, he's not supposed to be there. <laughs> uh, you guys find yourselves swirling back into uh, the room below the Sorak uh, family throne room, uh, this burial chamber mausoleum-like room, as you have escaped 
the phylactery vault, the temples of extraction, with Narvi defeated, seemingly his master, Halister Blackcloak, in a demi-lich form, destroyed, and the eight gemstones that were contained inside of this skull in Wilma's possession. I would, um, after we get out there, just kind of hustle into this one area with a little bit of room. I don't notice anything different about this place from the other place, right? This isn't like a mirror place or anything like that. Where you're at right now? Just being extra. Yeah, like 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 this is the the tomb, right? Like there's no weird shit going on. It's you guys observe everything, uh, trying to reel back in your mind how it looked when you guys were just here a few short hours ago. It seemed like forever ago. Uh, it seems everything's in in its right place. Weeks. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, everything seems to be in its same place. Uh, things kind of pushed about the same way that you were investigating within here. Uh, seemingly. No one has came down here or disturbed or, or moved anything since your last uh, trek into here. Right, so so I, I would kind of frantically like take all the gemstones and sit them in a circle. And you may even notice that I take the Wilmore one and give a little shake as I put it down. Um, and then I put Krinshina Bomb in the middle of them. Kind of like a spin the bottle kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, as you do that, uh, almost like a like a, a metal detector or or, or some sort of uh, like a uh, radiation detector, Geiger uh, <coughs> detector, it begins to pulse and beep as you begin to spin it around, and then as it hits a certain area, it seems to make that kind of swooping noise. You kind of refocus and pointing, and as it points into the one giant gemstone with this bald humanoid figure inside of it, uh, it seems to you that you have found a connection of where the soul of Narvi, who has completed this ritual, this task, to turn himself into a lich and have his soul be held in a place so he could live for eternity, you have found such vessel. So I, I kind of take it and I look at it, and I mean, it's just like a, like kind of cast to detect magic on it. Is there any like crazy protective spells or anything like that, or is it just a gem? Uh, you cast detect magic on it, and uh, you don't notice like any sort of like initial spells, of course, protecting it initially or anything like that. But of course, all sorts of arcane magic and uh, and powers are used to create such a being. Uh, but as as far as like uh something that might have a uh like a trap of sorts so you don't you don't sense anything like that okay and then so like to my knowledge like it's just a it's just a gem yeah it's a big or like black or something red like that. Yeah, 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 gemstone yeah. essentially yeah a repository uh where this soul seems to be residing inside of so i kind of take it in my hand and, and i look at fang and at uh soul rack and I, then i look back down at the gems and find the one with Wilmore and I kind of look at uh I go and I pull out his diary and I flip to the end and you guys kind of notice there's this page with just weird mumbo jumbo on it as I'm holding the gem and I just kind of read it out loud and then uh Eldrick Blast comes out of my hand into the gem like three times uh purple just kind of fire just ignites it Uh, into the one with Wilmore? No, into the one with Narvi that I'm holding. Okay. Um, as you cast this uh, necrotic energy of the Eldritch Blast into uh, this gemstone, pow, 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 three times rapidly, the gem, surprisingly to you, at least, begins to actually emit this brighter glow, and inside of it you can see the... Uh, malevolent evil face of Narvi's grin begin to grow bigger and bigger as he looks and begins to give you a nod. Yeah. Kind of look yeah, at the guys. <laughs> this isn't the type of thing you'd smash your way, buddy. Lay it down there on the floor, please. And uh, I pull out my sword of light. Now, now, wait a minute, Sorek. I feel like destroying this is a little bit more than just you smashing it. I feel as if, uh, 
Perhaps we have to do the same thing as what we did to Krishnabaum out in the courtyard. We all use our spiritual weapons that um, the Harpers had kind of told us about. And I think at the same time, we light this bitch up. Sounds good to me. So you use the same weapon regardless, and it should Dom Ringer. I'd kind of put it down. I'd also pick up Wilmore and see if he's freaking out right now or anything. Yeah, so you pick up the gemstone with this like uh, specter version of Wilmore in there, a very ghastly kind of apparition version. Uh, you see as you pick it, pick it on up, he kind of swims on over, floats on over to the edge, puts his uh, palms on the, on the edge of the gemstone, and... Uh, uh, how, how would Wilma respond inside there, Cole Bauer? What, what, what is it if he saw Wilma? He would like go up and he'd see her, and then he would just immediately just run away to the other side of the thing, and then he'd kind of see like Solrak and Fang and be like, "Oh, okay, she didn't do this by herself." <laughs> and it just kind of <laughs> like sheepishly goes up and gives her like a big smile and pats his eyes. It just kind of stares at her. As you guys see what seems to be like the swirling soul, the life force of Wilmore st stuck or trapped within this this red gemstone. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. uh, what say we smash Narvi? Here's my question. We smash Narvi's soul. Could we possibly be dooming Wilmore's? Wilma, you and I'm wondering, are you, are you able to dispel any kind of magic? I can, but I don't I'm know what. If... Uh... I'm wondering if turning off the magic powers behind these rubies would allow Wilmore to break out. But I, I'd, I'd kind of show it to him, and it's like, he looks more like a spirit. I don't know if this is a safe harbor for him. For now. I mean, I think if 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 you guys wanna wanna work on that one, and I point to the big uh, one with um, uh, Narvi in it, like I, maybe I can maybe I can talk to to Wilmore. Um, can I? Um, it's like I see him. Directly in front of me, mm -hmm. supposedly. Can I cast level two sending? Yeah, I have sending. Or what, what? What level is that sending spell? Level three. Short message, twenty-five words or less. Message online, or as you sender. So I'm going to cast Sending to Wilmore, and it's going to be, are you safe? How do we destroy Narvi? Uh, Love ya. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Wilmore res would respond, uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm dead. I... It looks like around this... I think my soul is trapped in here? And then he would say, uh... I don't fucking know. Destroy the damn thing. And I just... That resonates through my ears and I kind of look at the look at Sorak and Fag and go, Wilmore says he loves me. And he can't wait to 
be back with everyone. But if you guys could use that manly strength of yours and take care of that thing over there, he would really, really, really appreciate that for all the sacrifices you have done for him. Well, you're up for me. Uh, ready, Fang? And I draw my Dawnbringer back. Give me a second. I just kind of start walking back up to where we teleported from, mm -hmm. or to, I guess, from the prism. Mm -hmm. Um, I recall Wilma having eight rubies, and I'm just kind of looking around the room. And do I see anything in the room that... Like, this kind of red kind of draws my attention with, like, this kind of circle. Mm hmm Yeah, so that um, was the, like, can I... pulsing heart rock that you guys right, jumped into. Right. Uh, actually, right. currently, as you guys make your way into this room, I don't have another image of this map readily available, but that pulsing energy would not be going on anymore. It seems to be completely deactivated. And, yeah. okay, and do I notice, like anything in here that might correlate with the rubies in the sense of like orienting them in a way that might help us destroy the ruby that Narvi's in uh make a religion check or arcana check oh yeah nat one nice uh no, nah, yeah. Uh, you're not you. are not certain that there's any way of arranging anything. No, nah, just uh, it doesn't really kind of pop in here. Like, wait, what am I coming here for? I'm, I'm not even that thirsty. And then you walk back. And uh... <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, let's let's try and destroy this thing the way I kind of. But when you start to think of of being thirsty, uh, yeah, some some nice water. Definitely comes to your mind. No, it doesn't. Okay. I don't. I don't need water. Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> water though. Water. I don't know. I, I thought Fang was all about water. Ah, uh, hold on. My bad if he's I not like really like, I feel like I'm waiting know. with the sword. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one See, Wilma's just more. over there looking at, looking at Wilmore like, Gucci, Gucci, go. Now, <laughs> you feel free to ask questions to your dungeon master as well. You know. So. Who's that? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> 163 nights in, something like that. <laughs> so you guys, you guys gonna swing at it? I'm fucking waiting on Fang to decide what the hell he's doing. Yeah, let's, let's try and hit this thing. I, I thought I was going somewhere at the water. I don't know. All right. But, but Fang I doesn't swing. need food or water. That's the. That's the. Un does the Narvi spirit come to as undead? And I, I mean, well, it's the phylactery that you're technically attacking, uh, which is an object. Right. But yeah, just because of the damage purpose. Uh, sure. yeah, and I kind of have like my um, undying flame amulet, amulet just kind of face right at it. All right, swing. Oh, uh, and. Uh, kind of pour some, uh, actually, I don't even think I have any. It's fucking um, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Give me, give me one second, Solrak. Give me one second. Uh, Lord. Yes, I know. I apologize. Uh, we, we Mama walks over and, like, kicks it. Do you? This one, I just gotta give it a little nudge. Who has... You guys gonna hit it or what? Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Give me, give me one hour, as a matter of fact. What? We're a fucking yeah, hour. Yeah, Get out of here. Ex no, 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 no. Explain to them. <laughs> give me, Soul Wreck. Give me your, uh, 
canteen. Why? Just fucking do it. He's figuring uh, things what? out. Ex explain things. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but... <laughs> it would be nice. So what the fuck you're you, doing. Because you, I want to swing. I need consent. Is consent sexy? Just give me, just give me your water. What the hell you're doing? Yeah, I have to bless this water. It's... I think he wants to use holy water. Yes, Here I do. Here you go. Thank you. And so, I'm just kind of sitting crisscross applesauce uh, with the canteen like in the middle, and my hands just kind of placed on it. And I literally do not move for an hour. And I imagine Solrak every minute is just getting more and more impatient. <laughs> And he's trying to like budge me. He's trying to budge me. He's trying to take the water, and I'm just rock solid like a statue. Like he cannot move me. Like I just have the fucking zen in me, and he's like, "Oh, what the fuck? Fuck this." And Will was, Will was in the corner with the, with the Wilmore Stone going. It's like, and then these guys did this, and she's just like retelling the story of of everything and. And you can see Wilmore just sitting there, like, very sternly paying attention. <laughs> he's looking over at Fang, like, oh, fuck. Hurry up. <laughs> I know what he's doing. <laughs> and then after I am done, I just kind of <coughs> take some of that uh, powdered silver that I have and just kind of sprinkle it right on top. I'm like, all right, we are done. Uh, Sorek, you, I'm waiting on you. Huh? I look around. <laughs> Direct. So on the count of three, you slash, I pour. Alright. Well, 21 is my attack. <laughs> okay. Unless we're doing like a check. Right, One, Nick. two, three. So, yes, time it together as Fang is pouring this holy water that he's blessed all over this, uh, gemstone with Narvi a face inside of it, slamming at the inside of it, like, making this menacing look, and Solrak, you wield back the blade, and as, Sol as uh, Fang begins to pour it on there, you watch as the crystal itself begins to, like, almost boil <laughs> as the holy water seems to have an effect on it, and uh, the radiance from it begins to make the crystal crack <laughs> down the center, and as you wield back Solrak, you see a perfect opportunity to slash down in the center of this crack, and as you do, you impact it, and it lets out this booming roar. That cold energy that you guys felt at the basement or going down the, the tower emits ten times in here, <laughs> filling this air with this bright light. And uh, you guys standing here, um, let's see. Um, I need everyone to make a deck save. Is this technically from Undead? Uh, uh, is it from Undead? No, it's technically not. Okay. We still have the D4s? Uh, it's, it was an hour, so you don't have the Bless for sure. You might have Emboldening Bond. Yeah, you don't have the Bless. Emboldening Bond is 10 minutes, so okay, no, so but no. you would have the other one. So you'd have one yeah, D4. I'm going to so. use the Lucky. Okay. Damn. I failed. Oh, fuck. Well, I can use a lucky again, so I will. Okay, so... I mean, yeah, uh, if you want to, go for it. What is happening? Well, but I do get a d4. Okay. Did anyone roll above... 16. 18? No. Nope. Okay. You guys take, then, 65 <clears throat> points... Oh, of, God! ...of force damage... <laughs> as it just explodes with this massive force uh, like an atom bomb out of this thing <laughs> erupting uh, I guess Fang you'd only take half that damage right? And, yeah and uh yeah cool so uh but with that uh, as the light succeeds and that cold energy um, pushes back you guys are able to drop your hands from the blinding light as you see this spirit like form of Narby pulling into the air just get ripped apart shredded into thousands of pieces uh 
you see him fighting it off uh, as if he's like fighting some sort of like invisible beast as it's just like claws raking across him, ripping him apart, and phew, his energy just dissipates just as the skulls did inside of the uh, temple, and the phylactery of Narvi has been destroyed. The soul has been destroyed. Narvi, the red wizard, thou which is dead that you cannot kill, has been fucking killed. What a day. Wow. Took three years to do that, y'all. <laughs> 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 if we would have just kept the fucking thing from the beginning, we'd be fine. Should <laughs> have burned the boats, kept the thing, called it a day. That's right. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Wow. I guess it's. I like I need a cigarette now. <laughs> At this point, I, I mean, do we like go outside to see see if the sun kind of comes up? Yeah, I want to go out to the people and start screaming into the streets that we did it. Narvi's dead. Alright, so you guys are heading on up and out into the streets, it sounds like? Yes, sir. Alright, um, let me see. Da -da -da. All my streets pictures still are quite uh, dark and, and and scary looking, so we're just going to put you guys in the outer gates, where it doesn't look as dark and scary. Um, <laughs> and as you guys... Late morning. Yeah. <laughs> as uh, you guys make your way on up the stairs, out of the crypt in the mausoleum, into the throne room, where Solrak looks back at the throne, seeing it empty... Uh, the massive window looming behind it. Behind there were a black moon, uh, once sinister omen looming in the sky. It begins to fade into the oblivion. A profound shift washes over the world. And the horizon is, is painted with hues of crimson and gold. As the first light of new dawn breaks through the darkness, banishing the shadows and heralding the arrival of a new era. As you guys walk out into the streets, the, the air is filled with a sense of renewed hope and vitality as life stirs once more, shaking off the shackles of despair that had gripped the land for so long. You hear birds sing joyously in the treetops, their melodies carrying on the gentle breeze that whispers promises of a brighter future. You see members of, of the Harpers, of the dwarves of Citadel Adbar and Felbar, uh, Chucky and the others, they all come swarming you guys, giving cheers and celebration. And uh, each one of them lifts you guys up on their shoulders, cheering and shouting your guys' names. Wrecking crew! Wrecking <clears throat> crew! And with each passing moment, the world seems to awaken from a long slumber, as if shaking off the remnants of a haunting nightmare. The sun... Oh, yeah. Super, super quick, because this is the perfect spot to do it. Mm -hmm. As they carry me on their shoulders, I want to signify to the citizens of Daggerford that it's time to stir, it's time to awaken and uh, have this very special uh, artifact that was passed down from generation to generation. It was only meant to be used after the moments of absolute darkness to signify freedom and, and a new hope. And I take it out and I look up as I'm being carried on the shoulders and I think of my dad and I think of my family, my wife and kids and I say to them, this new chapter's for you. As I put it up to my lips and go, oh! <laughs> 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 and that's called a callback, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, love it. Uh, yeah, in this moment also, uh, out before I continue on, uh, Fang, is there something that you do as you make your way out into the new dawn and everything, and you're being cheered and, and carried on uh, from this eruption of joyous, uh, uh, joyous crowd? Yeah, I mean... 
immediately getting out here, I just embrace the the light that we get to see for the first time in God, what's felt like forever. Um, and, you know, upon being hoisted up, I'm just looking for Misa and Kuki to, you know, be reunited with them to kind of hug them and hug them tight and just cherish this moment that uh, I've gotten to experience with them since I've, uh, I guess, kind of moved away um, and meeting Solrak and Wilmore and Wilma. Yeah, yeah. As you are getting carried out through the streets and everything, you kind of look over the crowd, scanning around, looking for those familiar faces to you, those that um, are the closest to you in your heart. And uh, in the distance in the crowd, you notice, uh, you know, a a white top knot on this older man and a blue-skinned uh, Air Genasi in the crowd kind of set back a little bit further away from you. They lock eye contact with you. And you can feel uh, something you've been seeking from Kuki for quite some time. He He's a master of the arts, of, of the elements, uh, the elemental ways, and uh, he's been your master for quite some time. And although he's always been a very kind, gentle man, uh, you never has felt that you've had that full approval and acceptance from him. And as you look down over across the people here, you lock eyes with Kuki, you can't help but feel this over overwhelming sense of pride, of accomplishment, as he just kind of gives you a very s slow nod uh, in recognition of the man that you've become and uh, the journey that you've traveled on and all that you've gone through to help bring in and usher in the new dawn and eradicate this darkness and uh yeah, yeah. when uh for a while uh i couldn't <clears throat> help but question if i had made the right decision this is after uh you know getting to see him um after taking on the fire giants <laughs> um I couldn't help but kind of always question in the back of my head if I was making the right decision as it didn't feel like I ever had Kuki's approval and maybe he didn't feel as if I was on the right track, but I always felt deep down that I was, I met everyone for a reason mm -hmm. and I was kind of destined to and slightly obliged to help Solrak and Wilmore and Wilma on this mission that ended up needed us saving all of Faerun. Hell yeah. And uh, Wilma, as you're being walking out into the street, seeing the, the sun shining for the first time in a while, um, you being to get carried off by the crowd as well, is there anything that you do in this moment or sense or feel? So I, you know, I would I would kind of see them being carried off, and I'm being carried off, and I'm like very, like, I'm very happy at first. I actually have like soul rack, and I'm like, or, or not uh, soul rack, but like the, the Wilmore gem, and I'm like showing them off and like the people, so we could see all the happiness, and I'm talking to them, and and I'm really happy, and then just you know, after a couple minutes, my, like standard like just kind of bad vibe personality just kind of like kicks back in a little bit mm -hmm. and you know everyone just kind of noticed me like i mean no one really knows who i am and i've got wilmore in my hand and i've got all these other just random people in, in, in another hand and then i kind of just think back about the adventure and i kind of put them all in my pocket and I just kind of look at Solrak and Fang and just their joy and their happiness. And it's just, I'm just kind of like, let's, let's enjoy this one for a little bit. Yes. Yeah, you try to find that, that piece of joy and happiness for yourself as well. Uh, holding on to the, your loved one inside of a, a soul gem, a gem of sorts where he's, his spectral version of himself is trapped inside of, uh, you can't help but feel, you know, a little separated from the happiness and joy that everyone else seems to be feeling right now. But regardless, you you try to push those aside, those feelings aside, and really uh, 
really enjoy the moment for what it is. And with each one of these passing moments, the world seems to awaken anew for you guys out, out of this long slumber of this dark moon, as if uh, it's shaking off the remnants of a, of a haunting nightmare. And now the, the sun is out, and unobscured by the malevolent presence of that black moon, um, it bathes the land in its warm embrace, casting aside the lingering shadows of doubt and fear for not just you guys, but for everyone. And as those last vestiges of darkness fade from the sky, replaced by the brilliant tapestry of colors that heralds the dawn of, of a new day, a sense of peace just really settles in you guys, over the world. Um, it's a peace born from the knowledge that Though the road ahead may be fraught with challenges, the, the light up above will always triumph over the darkness. And that's where we're going to end tonight's game. Uh. <coughs> and you guys are level 19 now. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's go kill a god. <laughs> so with that said... Um, wherever we want to go with this journey, the rest of this journey, as it has been essentially, is completely up to you guys, of course. The, the quest at hand has been taken care of. Uh, the long-awaiting quest of, of killing Narvi, uh, bringing, ushering in the new dawn, eradicating this black moon, this umbral eclipse from taking fruition and, and ushering in this funeral opolis, this new era, this epoch of darkness and undead. You guys have stopped this now. It's up to you three, uh, literally Luke, Carlos, and Johnny <laughs> to decide <laughs> how you want to proceed with this. Uh, if you guys want to, I know Carlos, uh, Solrak might want to be coronated or something like that. Um, you guys might want to f free Wilmore. Uh, this adventure can go on as much longer as you guys want to, and it can end as soon as you want to as well. Um, so. uh, yes to both of those things, by the way. Coronation for show. Okay. Uh, I think maybe, like, in one shot in the Discord, I mean, Solrak is probably Coronation. Wilmore, or Wilma's is probably fine. Wilmore, like, does Fang have a one shot? Does he have any unfinished business? She one then we just line up a couple one yeah, cause, shots. Cause dagger I mean... purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, right now, it's, you know, Dagger Ford for the Lagrange Star has been ruled by some fucking tyrant, which means when you go back to civilization, it's not going to be just like, oh, everybody's happy. There's going to be some people there. <laughs> There's some bad guys that are hugging on to their shit. They're going to need to be okay. taken care of. I like that. So, so what we'll do then is. The coronation will have happen in this. That will essentially wrap up our campaign here. I think we'll how we'll go about that. We'll go ahead and do one shots of other quests that we want to do, which sounds like maybe uh, something within Daggerford happening along those lines, as you mentioned, uh, Carlos. Uh, we'll do something with Wilmore for Wilma, and then yeah, Luke, do you have something along the lines that? Of course, you know, high-level thinking um, that we'd want to maybe do for a one-shot. Don't have to spill it right now. We can talk about it in Discord and stuff. But if you do have something right now, I'd love to hear it. No, I, I'm kind of torn between a couple things off mm -hmm. the off the top of my head at this moment. So I'm really I'm asleep on it. Absolutely. I we also that. don't know where Solrak's mom is. Yeah, technically. I mean, <laughs> okay. She might be alive. All right, so we'll, we'll talk in Discord then, because we, yeah, we, we can carry this on for, you know, of course, a few more games. Uh, and but I mean, like, like do we want to... Yeah, I guess I guess that's, that's the question, right? Like, like do we want to move on to another campaign and then one-shot this a couple times yeah, every can, now and then, yeah, right? Let's figure out what we want to do first, and then we'll set a one-shot schedule for them, but then we can jump on to the next one, but... Yeah, uh, and maybe they're not one-shots. Maybe they're, like... One shot and like a shorty dog. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so <laughs> what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll three part one shot. We'll, we'll wrap this campaign up with one more session. Does that sound good to okay. you guys? Perfect. Well, with that session, what we'll do, and we, I'll talk about this in Discord, I guess, as well, but it's, it's cool to have this uh, discussion live, I suppose, um, is 
we will wrap up if you want to find out what has happened to Solrak's mother or where she is exactly uh, coronation and uh, and then after the coronation we'll fast forward uh, a couple months to a year in the future and you guys can just uh, give a nice um, epilogue of, of what each one of you individually are, are doing in that time frame uh, in the future so uh, does that sound I'll good? Bet. Love it. Cool. So hop in the Discord. We'll talk there about that before we sign off for the night. Is there anything else anyone on anyone else wants to say? That was fucking epic. Fucking <laughs> that was epic. a hell of a three years, and I'm 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 just as excited for the next one. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Hell yes. What'd you say, I Lisa? Gonna, I, I said I knew it was gonna be like this, but it's bittersweet. Oh yeah, I I said to Lex yesterday. I was like, I'm just lamenting. Like I'm I'm never gonna play Zusk again. This character that I played for two and a half years, this level twenty, like this guy that was like part of me. Like he's just not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Dressed like that for the supermarket. And shit. Yeah. I am Zusk. <laughs> Bald head, tattoo on my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's definitely bittersweet for sure, but, uh, it's not quite over yet, and, uh, make sure you guys do level up to level 19. Uh, with that, go ahead and, uh, we'll take a short rest IRL, and, uh, look out for those goblins under the stairs, and we'll catch you guys next time as we wrap up <laughs> this campaign! God damn it. I love it. Later, guys. It's great. Peace out. Later, guys. <laughs> Talk to you. Bye.